welcome here. We have a great show for you today. We're going to have Matt Lauer, as I mentioned in a moment. Uh, but first, we have a few things that you need to know this morning. Women continuing to weigh in on Harvey Weinstein and his alleged behavior, not to mention alleged crimes. This time it is actress Maya Bialik. Do you know her? So she's the, she's the star of The Big Bang Theory. Uh, I know her from Beaches. Remember when she was like the little actress? She's weighed in in a New York Times opinion piece, uh, trying to make a very nuanced argument, to put it mildly. She's writing that women should be able to wear whatever they want. They should be able to flirt however they want with whomever they want. But this is where people get themselves in trouble. But, she writes, she also says she sees the upside of, quote, not being a perfect 10 calling herself a proud feminist who has little desire to diet, get plastic surgery, or hire a personal trainer. She says, I still make choices every day as a 41-year-old actress that I think of as self-protecting and wise. I dress modestly. I don't act flirtatiously with men as a policy. Which, okay, got it. But the response from the internet was, not all harassment victims are perfect tens. Not all flirt, not all dressed immodestly, and even if they do dress immodestly, it is not an invitation to illegal behavior, period, right? We have to start getting ourselves out of this mindset. Yes, you should dress appropriately at the office, but if you don't, it doesn't mean you're inviting your own harassment, okay? Same thing with the short skirt anyplace else in any other club. And speaking of Harvey Weinstein, filmmaker Woody Allen, you're gonna be shocked, Woody Allen has weighed in on this, saying that the whole Harvey Weinstein thing is sad for everybody involved. Everybody. And he really hoped that it, it, people don't use this to turn it into an, uh, an opportunity for uh, Salem witch hunts against men. <laughs> 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 Which, like, if that had come from somebody like me, it would have been fine. But since it's Woody Allen, it's less fine. <laughs> All right, there was a very scary moment for passengers on an Air Asia flight yesterday. Raise your hand if you're afraid of flying. I am. I am completely, and I will grab anybody, including like a three-year-old boy, like, hold me! <laughs> they were headed from Australia to Indonesia when the cabin lost pressure, the oxygen masks dropped from the ceiling, and the passengers were told the one thing the pilots have said to me many times you never want to hear in an airplane, which is, brace. That's the one thing. Can you imagine this? Look at this. The airline, um, apparently, <laughs> the crew panicked which is not what you're looking for in your crew. One passenger reported that the staff was screaming in tears and shocked. It's like, I mean, it's a natural human reaction, but aren't you thinking that your crew is gonna be like, you're fine, just use your oxygen mask? Instead, they were like, run for your lives! <laughs> uh, oh, somebody on board sent a text message to her family just hoping that they would get it and wrote that people were pretty much all saying goodbye to one another as they, they apparently they dropped something like 20,000 feet. Uh, one passenger, Chris Jeans, was planning to propose to his girlfriend when they got to Bali. Instead, he pulled down his oxygen mask and asked her right there mid-air. <laughs> Which is kind of less committal than the average woman, like when you think, <laughs> I don't know, I'm not sure. All right, so we wanted to discuss all of this in more detail and we thought, who better to ask then Matt Lauer! Matt Lauer's here! Hi! Look at me! Hey, guys. Yes. Uh, I know, it's exciting. Well, I, I, love, I love when Megan says, who better to talk to than going down on an airplane <laughs> than Matt Lauer? Perfect. I was thinking calm. Under difficult circumstances. Do you know when they make the announcement and you're on the plane, they say if you're traveling with a child, I always think, or someone acting like a child, which would be me <laughs> under those circumstances. I, you know, what I've discovered is that fear of flying is not solved by more flying. It no. doesn't matter how often I'm up there, I'm still like, oh my God, why? And then you look at like the business travelers, do they look freaked out? They, they never do, but it's not as calming if as I If you're like afraid of flying, doesn't matter whether you're in first class, business class, or coach class, you're gonna be panicked yeah. if something like that happens. They always say like, oh, are you really afraid of dying up there? And I always say, no, I'm afraid of dying when the plane hits the ground 30,000 <laughs> feet below. Yeah. Um, How cheery on a Monday morning, this is great. <laughs> All right, you want cheery? I got cheery. Okay. There's a, there's a new study out about emojis in office correspondence. Do you ever do like a smiley face in your work so emails? Savannah and I have this argument all the time. Savannah is emoji crazy. Yes. Every email or text you get from her contains at least one emoji. And I am a complete hater of emojis. Why? You know, um, I think it's lazy. 
I think you could probably <laughs> type nice. in what you meant. The only one I use every once in a while is that one, the AOK one. Yeah. So if someone sends me a, a text or an email and has a question in it, I will do that. But I'd rather just put K, like, OK. I like the one that the circle with the big eyes. Like, that <laughs> communicates so much. But they say if you do it, you're undermining your own credibility. Well, at yeah, the again, it's one thing to do it in a personal email. But an office or a work email, I think, is not a good idea under any circumstance. I'm going to have to rethink that. I was on with Hoda a couple weeks ago. We were talking about if you've ever drunk texted somebody and regretted it. And I must say, that you brings out the right you... person to talk to about that. <laughs> If you, if you get a lot of, like, emojis from me in a text, the hours are I've had a glass of wine. Like, yeah. oh, I'm so funny. Heart, heart. By the way, <laughs> disclaimer here. We just did a segment on, on the show uh, where Savannah cooked pasta with Scott that. Conan. And it's garlic pasta. And I, I might oh, have I taken my role <laughs> as a taster a little bit too seriously. <laughs> That's why so I have parsley in my teeth or a garlic smell. That's my bad. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you for your full disclosure. Now, Matt used to report in local news. I started off right. in local news. Uh, there's a great local news story. Sort of, I don't know if we could call it a blooper, but it's awesome. So there was this cougar on the loose in Mississippi. And somebody got it on camera, and it's really blurry. It, and, and we'll show it to you. This is like the first person who saw it and shot a little video. And then later, uh, the news reporter went back to try to get it on camera for the evening news. So let's just watch the initial video where the regular citizen got it. Oh, we don't have the original. All right, well, just trust me. It has an actual cougar. Now, here's the reporter going back to the evening news. ...of a cougar, and that's not it. That looks like a house cat, uh, but we just beat <laughs> away from where a local man wrote his cell phone video on what some say is a cougar. I'll be right back with a live report. Why even bother? And he did it with such energy and enthusiasm. <laughs> That poor have, cat. Have you ever been attacked uh, by a wild cougar or other animal? Have you ever had an animal incident while reporting the news? You must have as the host of the Today Show. Have I ever been attacked by a wild <laughs> cougar? <laughs> no, I probably wouldn't be sitting here if I had been attacked <laughs> by a wild cougar. I did get bitten by a llama one time. Uh -huh, I knew the there'd shoulder. be something. I was doing something at kind of a petting zoo, and it bit me on the shoulder. And I had a, a miniature horse kick me in the butt one time. See? I knew there'd be gold in them bar hills. Yeah. By the way, does anybody ever heard the story the first time Megan and I ever met? Oh, we went, no. we, we went and we had a cup of coffee one time. This was how many years ago? Six, seven? Six, seven, seven years seven. ago. We went to this little place that sold pastries, and we sat down, and she had a cup of tea, and I had a cup of tea. And for the entire hour that we spent together getting to know each other, she had a chocolate scone <laughs> stuck in her tooth, and I didn't say a word to her for the entire time. It was that right there. Up. It wasn't like a little teeny fleck of chocolate. It was like it blacked out an entire tube. <laughs> and finally, at the very end, I said, hey, it was great to see you. We shook her hand. I said, by the way, you have had a thing of chocolate <laughs> stuck in your tube for the entire She was so mad at me for like three years. She finally got over it. And I was already super pregnant at the time and feeling like not my strongest. But I was like, oh, you know, he's, he's so nice. I really love that. What a... <laughs> <laughs> If I had, had, if I thought about it, I would have taken pictures of yeah. you for that. And that was, that was a harbinger of our relationship to come. Yeah. Radical honesty, too late. Yeah. <laughs> it's great to see you, Matt. Good to see you. Lots of love. Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there. And click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.